This is the first part of the NI Tower configuration tutorial video. This video will show you how you can create NI Tower using Socrates. Please make sure that you associated the NI Tower IP bundle to the IP catalog before these steps. Double click on the IP catalog entry. This will bring up the create configured IP wizard page. From here we have two options. Option one, you can use an existing IAML file to create an NI Tower component. With this option, you will be able to reuse your previous configuration to make changes or to use it in a different project. Option two, you can also use a standard template topology provided by the IP bundle. Please note that if set, option one overrides option two. For this tutorial, we will use the option two, so select option two in the templates field, select Example 1 and click Finish. When you create new NI Tower component, the Interconnect Architect application is launched automatically from the tool. You can also launch it by selecting an Interconnect project and choosing Configure. Once the graphical user interface has loaded, the pages that are available depends on the IP that's being configured and they are laid out across the top of the screen, forming journey from left to right. The first page we have for the Interconnect Architect is Domains page. This page is for adding, removing, moving, and renaming domains, as well as defining their relationships. The left-hand side of the new window is occupied by the Domain Tree browser, and the right hand side of the window is split into the domain editor at the top and the clock domain relation editor at the bottom. The domain tree browser is used to add or remove domains using the green plus icon and the red minus icon respectively. Removing a voltage or power domain will also delete all of its power or clock domains. Domain editor allows user to rename a domain, move it to another parent, or update the clock frequency, or add retiming stages for both clock controller and PME core. The domain editor will only be visible when a domain is selected by selecting it in the tree. The clock domain relation editor is for specifying the relationship between the clocks. The relationship can be synchronous, asynchronous, or none between clock domains. To make a relationship between two clocks, select the desired crossing type and click on the cell where the clock row and column intersect. The upper right hand half of the clock relations metric is grayed out. This is because it simply mirrors the lower left hand half. Therefore, all relations need to be made on the lower left hand half, which isn't grayed out. Adding more clock domains to your configuration will add to the overall area of the design, as additional design units are required to support the additional clock domain. Second page of the Interconnect Architect is the Global Configuration page. This page is for setting the global configuration parameters and set project-wide defaults. The global configuration parameters are on the left-hand side of the page and the project defaults are for each protocol on the right-hand side. To update the parameters, enter the desired value or choose from the provided drop-down. Each parameter has a tooltip which gives some information relating to the parameter, its range, its default, and a brief explanation. The parameters are all preset to their default values. Depending on the which user signal width mode you choose, the user signal width window on the right hand side can change. In the global configurations window, we also have a critical error vector tick box. Taking one of these options will cause that error to be reported as a critical error. A critical error is reported by the FMU using the FMU CRI interrupt output. The third page of the Interconnect Architect is the Interfaces page. The Interface page is for managing completer and requester interfaces and as well as configuring Stripe groups and interface groups. Add completer and requester interfaces by clicking the Add Completer Interface or Add Requester Interface buttons respectively. 
A pop-up window allows the interface name to be set. Select how many to create of the same configuration, choose a protocol, and select the clock domain. Once these fields are complete, click Next. In the next window, the interface parameters can be edited and will be preset to their default values. Once you're done, click Update to finish. When creating more than one interface, the name input changes to interface name prefix. This will be appended with the underscore followed by the unique incrementing three digit number for each interface. You can use the bin icon in the interface list to delete the interface. Managing strike groups. The strike group is a set of target interfaces grouped together to make a virtual target. When the strike group is the target of a memory region, accesses to that memory regions are stripped between the target interface. This is commonly used in conjunction with memory subsystems, where striping helps to improve the bandwidth and latency. Stripe groups can be added, removed, and updated in the Stripe group section. To add a new Stripe group, click the green plus icon next to the root tree node. In the model, give the group a name, select the protocol, the strap size, and one, two, or four of the available interfaces, and click Update. To reorder interfaces in a Stripe group, use the up and down arrows next to the corresponding interface. To remove the Stripe group, click the red minus icon next to the group in question. The interface groups are only allowed for APB interfaces. An APB interface group is a set of up to 16 requester APB interfaces. These interfaces will use a single network interface device to access the interconnect. Even if a design contains only a one requester APB interface, it must belong to an interface group. There are two ways to add an interface group. Add one or more requester interfaces with the supported protocol, for example, APB4, and a new interface group will be created containing all the interfaces being created. Add an interface group by clicking the green plus icon next to the Add Interface Group and optionally update the given name. Existing interfaces can now be added to the new group or new interfaces can be added by specifying the group name. The last thing about the Interfaces page is the Error tab next to the Data tab. The error tab next to the data tab is to add a dedicated APB interface to your FMU. This interface allows error recovery software to read the contents of the error record data table and act on the errors. To access these registers, the FMU must be targetable through the NI Tower address map. To add a dedicated APB interface, click Add Complete Interface, and you can give it a, a unique name and you can create a multiple interface. You can also change the clock domain. Click Next. In the parameters section, change the type of secure access support and the AMBA interface protection. After configuring that, click Update. And the newly added APG interface will be shown in the list.